What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John, for the Game of Dota here. Welcoming you to the Week 12 NFL Power Rankings. Week 12, Thanksgiving week, y'all! Um, no, this is going to be a crazy week, I think, of the NFL. Um, in my mind, I think a lot of the road teams are going to actually have a heyday. Um, so we'll kind of find out what happens as the you know weeks progress. But here we are. We're going to go ahead and start this off with number 32. If you guys don't know who it is right now, then... I don't know who you are or if you even watch football, but it's the Jets. Okay, the Jets are just trash. They're getting better, which is kind of bad because the, the Jaguars look like they're getting worse. And, like, if they win one game this season, the Jaguars could have the number one pick based, based off of a strength of schedule. So, yeah, how about they just don't win a game and secure Trevor Lawrence? Like, come on. Y'all know better. Just, just put up with being 32. Be Put up with being the shame of the league so you can get Trevor Lawrence. Uh, and don't let the Jags swoop in and take him. Uh, number 31 is the Jacksonville Jaguars, speaking of. Um, honestly, the Jacksonville Jaguars going down three. They had absolutely no match for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is kind of to be expected. Um, the reason why they get to move down a couple spots uh, is because a lot of the teams around them actually played reasonably well. Um, so we got to give them kind of the, the love there. Um, next is the Cincinnati Bengals, and they're going to go down nine spots this week. I mean, <sighs> unfortunately... I think as fans, um, we all knew, uh, and I'm saying NFL fans, like general NFL fans, we all knew that this Bengals offensive line was trash, okay? Uh, the fact of the matter is, we also knew Burrow is going to go against a lot of top-tier NFL D-lines, the Steelers. I would give the Ravens the nod there. Um, Washington, like, there was a lot of really high caliber defensive lines that they were going to have to go against this season, and unfortunately, it just didn't pan out the way that you would want it to, obviously, Burrow gets injured, I don't, I think without Burrow, really, they're nothing, unfortunately, and I hate to say it that way, um, I just don't see them progressing or doing anything good, so hopefully Burrow stays safe. Hopefully, you can get a good resurging year next year, but honestly, right now, I don't see anything like anything in the positive for Burrow right now. Um, number 29 is the T Dallas Cowboys. They're going to move up two spots. Um, I'm going to give them the nod here. They beat the Vikings. They did what they wanted to do and what they needed to do this week, so that's always a good thing, always a positive thing, um, especially after beating the... Vikings, it was 31-28, to 28, so it was still a close game, but, I mean, hey, Andy Dalton put up 31 points. That's a miracle in and of itself. Um, next, we have the Philadelphia Eagles going to drop down a spot after their 17-22 to 22 loss to the Cleveland Browns. Honestly, this Eagles ball club is just looking terrible. They're not looking good. Um... They keep losing all these key games, and, like, they just need to pick up the slack. And I don't know if they will at all this season, because there's too many of these, like, clunkers. And Carson Wentz is not playing well. They're just, yeah, it's bad. This is not a season to be an Eagles fan. And yet, surprisingly, they're first in the division by half a game. Now, after Thursday, luckily, we'll have a new division leader, um, and hopefully they will stay, because nobody, everybody looks trash <laughs> in that division. Next, we have the Washington football team, um, as they're going to move to the 27th spot after their win against the Bengals. Yeah, I get, a lot of people would argue that nothing really happened, right? Nothing really happened in this game, and I would agree with that. I mean, 20 points is still terrible. Um, in a points per game kind of situation when this defense is not the greatest. It's pretty holy. Um, but a lot of teams are like that this year. It's kind of crazy. But anyway, 20 points is not a lot. Didn't do well. Um, Burrow getting hurt really did make a difference in this game. So I'm not going to like middle praise them and be like, oh my god, they're like gods of football. Because they're not. Um, 
But right now, even though a lot of people would say that they're not the division front runner, which I would say they're not either. There's another team on this list that I would give the nod to be the division front runner to. Um, yeah, I just I see this team improving, which is nice, but they're definitely still not good enough to really make any headway, um, in my opinion. Um, next we have the Denver Broncos. They're going to move up four spots after beating the Dolphins. And honestly, again, it's another one of the situations where you're like, why did they move up so much? And to me, they moved up so much because they held the Dolphins. Their defense is actually a really stout defense. And they're going to be one of those teams that you don't want to play week by week by week by week. Um, their offense is still lackluster. They still have a lot of problems in the turnovers and they're, they're by far not a complete team, but this defense is looking scary and not a defense you're going to want to play on a week to week basis. Um, if you're like the Dolphins or the Bears, I don't think they, I don't, I know they don't play, but I'm just saying like the Dolphins are one of those things like teams that don't have a great offense and that I've said for many reasons that they're not great offensively, but um, defensively, they're really good. That was this Dolphins team. Offensively, they are not that great. They haven't done very well with Tua, but defensively, they're really good. Um, and so that had upset potential. They capitalized. Good job, Broncos. Um, next, at number 25, is the New York Giants moving up a spot. Um, they are in that kind of, they're the front runner, I think, in this division. Obviously, everybody's so grouped. The NFC is like, they're all together, but the Broncos are just in the middle of it. Um, but that just tells you how bad this division is. Um, I don't see anything good. They were on buy, so I can't really move them up or do anything. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I did there. Um, next, despite losing pretty badly... The Atlanta Falcons are moving up only due to the fact that um, the Bengals went down nine. So that's, yeah, not much to talk about. They got smoked. Um, I feel like the Falcons can do better, uh, but the Saints are just, they're, they're grooving. And it's nice to see the Saints groove. Um, next, at number 23, we're going to get the Detroit Lions. They're going to drop three spots. I'm... I can't, I'm, I'm just going to be like this. You got shut out. Let it sit. We're moving on. <laughs> uh, next, we have the 49ers somehow moving two spots because on the bye week. Now, the reason why the 49ers obviously are moving is, well, the Lions dipped under them, and then the Bengals lost Burrow. So, again, they're on a bye week. Nothing much to talk about. Um, then we have the New England Patriots who are going to move up a singular spot. This week, uh, after the loss to the Texans, again, Burrow. Um, the 21 was where the Bengals were. Um, Burrow going out is what's going to move them up. Uh-oh. Um, I said, uh-oh, because I think I moved something, but we'll find out. Next is the Houston Texans at 20, moving up three spots. And honestly, what a lovely sight to see um, the Texans finally kind of resurging and doing better. Um, obviously, the Texans are not going to be, like, your premier, like, oh my god, they're the best team in the league, but they're also not bad, um, and I, this is exactly what I was talking about, um, with the Texans, right? I said that their early schedule sucks. It was so bad. Like, I couldn't imagine. Packers, like, the, the amount of tough teams on their early slate was insanity. Chiefs, Ravens, Steelers. Um, Vikings weren't not necessarily a tough team. I think they could have won there. Um, and then Titans, Packers, like five of the first six games were rough. Like I couldn't imagine, you know, having those games like at, at your first, or I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, five out of the first seven were what I would consider a rough game. Um, and then you, you're finally entering this easier part of your schedule. Jaguars, you should have beat the Browns. Uh, Patriots, li Lions. Um, the only issues is that you got your divisional opponents. You got Colts twice and Texans. Uh, or t Titans. So your divisional opponents are what really, I think, the only threatening things in your schedule. Um, so I'll be interested to see how that plays out, what that does. But if they continue playing like they played against the uh, 
Patriots, I'm going to be a lot more optimistic with this team. Obviously, this team's not making the playoffs, but um, I think they're going to get some marquee wins. I think they could finish out this season 6-10, and 7-9. 7-9 and nine. And nine seems very reasonable to me. I mean, they're 3-7 and seven as we speak, or they're 4-7 and seven as we speak, excuse me. Um, so being 4-7 and seven is not that bad. Um, personally, and I could see them being 7-9 and nine very easily. Um, next, we have the LA Chargers, who are going to... Oh, well, I, they didn't move. Surprise. Um, and the LA Chargers, they didn't move this week, even though... Like, they got the win um, against the Jets, but again, they almost, they almost blew it, and that's not good. Um, I'm just surprised that they're up here in the 19 kind of range. I feel like... If they don't start showing me stuff, I think they're going to start moving down. But um, honestly, I'm surprised. They've been just stuck here every week, week after week after week. They're just stuck at 19, and it's sad to see. Um, they're not moving anywhere because they're, like, doing enough to sustain the spot, but not doing enough to get better or worse. Oh, uh, yuck. Oh, I keep which is bad. Next, we have the Chicago Bears. They're going to drop a spot to 18. Um, honestly, the Bears are just oof. What an oof. If you're the Bears fan, um, you had a bye week, but now you're going to go against the Packers. If you lose to the Packers, then you're 5-6 and six and out of the playoffs, and the playoffs are basically secured in the NFC side, um, which is freaking super crazy to think about. Like, the playoffs being basically solidified as long as the Cardinals win, um, and the, like, because a two-game lead is, it's very hard to, like, come back from, so, anyway, um, Bears looking like exactly what we thought they were when they were in that 14 to 18 conversation, we knew they were going to be in this yellow tear, um, the one time I moved them up, they got dropped right back down, um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're going to stay in this yellow tier, I think, the rest of the year, um, but who knows, if they start, if the Chargers start picking up on the pace, they might move up, um, but next week, the Minnesota Vikings also dropping a spot, um, after their sl big loss, it was not good, not pretty, um, but then they started picking it up towards the second half, so, I mean, they have some, like, wor they have their work cut out for them, that's for sure, uh, next at number 16, we got the Carolina Panthers, who are gonna move out two spots into 16th place, um, obviously the Panthers are not gonna be a playoff team, but this is, like, this is well known at this point, but, the Panthers, realistically, um, they're at defense, like, 0-20. to 20. If you get a shutout, you're going to get rewarded. I don't care. Um, you're not a best team by any means, but I think you could, uh, on any given Sunday, beat the Bears, I think, um, as well as the Vikings. I think, realistically, um, the Bears, the Vikings are a little bit more of a stretch, but I just don't really necessarily know how I feel about that yet. Um, but yeah, the Panthers are in that weird, lovely category where it's, they're in a nice spot. Uh, lots of injuries on the offensive side has prevented a lot more fun for us, unfortunately, but they're working through it, and Matt Rule is a really good coach, so I'm giving them props here. I think Matt Rule is going to be just continuing to be really well. Um, next we have the Miami Dolphins at 15. Minus one. Honestly, the Dolphins looked like the old Dolphins. The Dolphins that were in the 20s. Um, so, hopefully they don't continue that way. But we don't know much about Tua. Like, Tua has not been a high-caliber, high-performing player. Like, he's been a game-manager-type quarterback. Like, eight, 11 for 20, 83 yards and a touchdown. Like, what the heck? He he does not gunsling. He does not throw the deep ball. And it shows with their offensive lackluster ability. Like, like here, Dolphins, Tua, 15 of 169 yards, two touchdowns. Like, he is not your gunslinger type of quarterback, and that is what he has shown. Um, and in an offensive league where you need to have that gunslinger, that person that, like, that's why Ryan Fitzpatrick like, replace Tua this week, because you need that person that can throw that deep to intermediate crossers, or that deep to intermediate routes, um, and you're not getting that with Tua, which is gonna, like, make low offensive games, and 
create a bunch of issues. Um, the only difference is Tua actually will protect the football. So I think Tua's got a lot of development that he can do and he will do. Um, but I think he's playing it safe. And your rookie year playing it safe is not the most optimal. It's nice to play it safe and get those wins, but just don't play it safe all the time. Because if you, cause if you play it safe all the time, you're going to end up being Kirk Cousins. Um, and you don't want to be that for your career. You want to be one of the greats. Take them risks. Move them all down the field. If they don't work out, they don't work out. It's your rookie year. You get a slide. You... Uh, led this Dolphins ball club to a much better record than you would have ever thought this Dolphins ball club would have been. Take some risks, Tua. That's that's what I'm asking you to do. I, I don't I just take some risks. You play, I believe, the You play the Jets. Please, for the love of all that is holy, Tua, take some risks against the Jets. Uh I hope he does, but I don't know. He's been he's shown this whole play it safe thing and the Dolphins might lose to the Jets. I hope not. I hope not. But it could happen. Um, in New York, like, uh, I hate thinking that. I hate thinking that could be a possibility. Um, but yeah. Uh, next, we got the Cleveland Browns moving up a spot. Um, honestly, they just flip flopped. One won, one lost. Boom. Um, Oakland Raiders are going to stay put at 13 yet again. Um, they lost to the Chiefs. They're the number one team. They kept it close, 31 to 35. I'm not gonna hinder you too much again. Divisional game never really have been that one to like hinder and be crazy over divisional losses. Um, but definitely have some improvements to be made. Next we have the Arizona Cardinals moving down. It says down two. Yes, down two spots. Dull. It's down two because they were at ten. Um, honestly, the Cardinals showed weakness last. They had a very, they were not physical. They did not, they were outmatched physically. And that's not what you want to see um, from a team that's aspiring to go to the playoffs. Um, right now, they would be that seven seed in the playoffs. And I think they're either going to be the six or the seven this year. I don't, I see them in the playoffs, but I don't see them in a high ranking in the playoffs. I think a lot of that's because the freaking Bears are the one that's trailing them. There's no way the Bears are going to do good. They, let's be fair. Um, hashtag freak the Bears, as Joy says. Um, next, we got the Tennessee Titans going up a spot uh, after a win in overtime. Um, obviously, I predicted the the, the uh, Ravens to win this game. Obviously, I was not paying attention because Lamar's terribleness at home. Uh, but honestly, the Tennessee Titans, to me are not a bad ball club. They're one of those ball clubs that you're like, uh, what? Like, they did this? Like, but they don't, they're they not somebody who's gonna, like, you know, spring the record books or do anything. They play cohesively as a team, and I think that's one of their best uh, attributes of this team and one of the reasons why I think this team could make it interesting throughout the year. Um, I think this team is one of those, it's fun that you, like, they play as a team, so they win as a team, and they lose as a team, uh, because everybody's gonna either play terrible as a, like, or everybody's gonna play well, like, their losses, oh my god, they've been big losses, um, they've not been little losses by far, but I think that's, like, the culture, and, like, this team in general, they're gonna win well as a team, and then they're gonna lose well as a team, um, and it's gonna make them stronger in the long run, and it's just nice to kind of see a team that, sits here and does well. Um, and I hope they continue that. Um, I don't know if they will against the Colts, who are leading into this, are number 10. Um, two AFC South teams with two overtime games with the same result. Honestly, I, the Colts should not have won this game. They got really lucky, uh, which is going to set up for this 10-11 to 11 game. It's going to be really fun to see. Um, I'm gonna, the, the Colts have a tough ending schedule, though. Um, and that's kind of something I'm worried about is the toughness of this schedule in comparison to the Titans schedule where it's not as tough. Um, I feel like this could go either way. This division, this game could be determinant of the NFC or AFC South. Um, right now, I think the Colts are a better team, but I would give the Titans the edge to win the division. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens next week. 
Next, we have the Buffalo Bills, who are going to go stay put at nine. Um, they had a bye week, I believe, didn't they? Or who did they play? Um, it looks like they... Who did they play? They were on bye. Okay. Cool. Good. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, I swear they were on a bye this week. And they were. Um, so don't need to talk about them because they were on bye. Next, we got the Packers. They're going to drop down a spot to number eight. No hard feelings. I, the reason why they're not dropping down a little bit more is because the Bills were on bye. Um, but an overtime loss at Lucas Oil Stadium. Um, and it's just not good. You don't want to take losses like that, especially losses that are going to impede on your playoff performance and how everything's going to go in the playoffs. Um, I wouldn't be too worried if I were a Packers fan. Um, I think this Packers team is going to bounce back against the Bears, have a great time against them, and, you know, not have any worries. I mean, you have an opportunity to kill a team's playoff hope in your division. Just, I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to stab that knife through the Bears' heart um, and play really well against this, the Bears' defense. Um... And you will see a fired up team next week. Honestly, I I could I'm definitely seeing it. Um, hopefully you do because that's a divisional opponent. That's yeah. It, it it's realistically the Packers basically have the division already. So because um, every other team in that division is in the um, third column. <laughs> so uh, next we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers dropping three spots this week. A big drop. Um, and, you know, a lot of people would say that might be an overstatement or an overreaction, and it's not to me. They're 7-4, and four, um, and that's not good. They are potentially in contention to drop to 7-5 and five as they play the Kansas City Chiefs next week. Um, and dropping to 7-5 and five would be huge. Um, and the other problem that this team has is... The lack of... It's like the exact opposite of the Titans. It's that lack of continuity, that lack of paying attention to what's going on in the game, and the, it feels like they are not playing smart football. It's just they are overloaded with talent, and that's going to help their team out. Yes, but talent isn't everything. Intellect and smarts is something, too. Um, and they just are not playing with intellect they're they're not playing with their mind they're playing with their bodies and you want you need to play with your mind and your body um and i think that's just part of the stigmatic culture that bruce arians brings like he's so stigmatic like it's crazy like everything is not hit like nothing can be his fault i don't like that in a coach you yeah, like this whole nothing is my fault mentality spreads like wildfire. And you can see it with this team. Like, obviously, t Tom Brady's like, oh, I'm happy that I'm getting criticized. Great. Cool. Uh, I get it. Like, you want to be the, tell the honest truth. But to the media, to everybody out there, like, oh, this is Tom's fault. Everything's Tom's fault. Tom destroys everything. And as somebody... I'm like, yes, great. I'm glad that Tom is finally, like, getting the kind of, not the treatment he deserves. He doesn't deserve that treatment. But also, he's not wrong. I mean, Tom Brady has thrown uncharacteristically more interceptions. Um, but let's play devil's advocate. Could it be the offense, the way the offense works? Yes. I mean, if Tom Brady can't work in your system, who can um, and, like, yeah, it's, like, it, it, it's a very, like, aggressive system, I guess is how to say it. Um, there, if you're tentative for one second, you're screwed. And as a quarterback who doesn't want to make mistakes, you're going to be tentative. You want to be tentative but not overly tentative, um, which is like like you have you're having two sides of this coin here. You've got uh, I'll bring it back to Tua. Tua's got that overly tentative kind of oh god something bad's gonna happen if I do something wrong kind of mentality. Tom 
right now in the Buccaneers offense is be aggressive, be assertive, be assertive, be assertive. That's my sister never watches these, but she would she would enjoy that. Uh, but anyway, and it's a, you you need a mix, you need a balance. Balance is everything, and some of these teams just haven't figured that out. Um, okay, next we have the Los Angeles Rams. Um, who are going to move up two spots just right ahead. I think that the Packers, um, I want to see the Packers and the Rams play against each other. I want it so bad. Uh, but we're not going to get it this year, sadly. But anyway, I can't wait. If that happens, like, if we get a 3v6, like a 3 seed and 6 seed, I would love to see it be Packers and Rams. Like, that'd be a fun matchup. Um, but anyway, the Rams, you know, they, they take a care of a really good opponent. Still don't see them winning the division. Um, but they are realistically, they're right on, they're right on the heels. They're right on the heels of being one of the best teams in the NFC. Um, next, a lot of people are going to say I overrated this team and yeah, I can see that, but I'm not going to take and give them a hard hit and a hard knock for losing it overtime. And that is, I'm, I'm treating them the same as I'm treating every other team, right? I'm going to knock the Ravens down a spot. After losing in overtime to the Titans, um, depending on how bad they lose to the Steelers, it, they might start. You might start seeing the fall, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give them the fall yet. I have hope in this Ravens ball club that they can actually show us something, but they are. They're teeter. To me, they're teetering on that edge of, are they good enough or are they not? And we need to see a good performance on Sunday, it, to really be like, okay, they're good enough. And I don't know if we're going to see it. I mean, if they drop to 6-5, and five, they're falling. Um, they're, they're at risk of being just inside the top 10, if not outside of it. Um, and I hope I don't have to knock them down that far. But I think they, they are very much at risk of dropping that much more this week. Um, next, we have the Seattle Seahawks at number 4. Uh, they came back. Their defense is looking stronger than ever. As a fan, I'm excited. I want to hopefully have that happen. There, we're going into a stretch where we have four, hopefully, easy wins. Um, you can't call any game easy, but when you have three games against the NFC East, um, <laughs> that like you would hope that something good happens. It's three games against the NFC East and the Jets. If we lose one of those games, oh, somebody's gonna go on a tirade. Um, but. Honestly, good week. What you wanted to see. Defense is improving. Keep it up. Um, next, we have the New Orleans Saints. They're going to stay put after their complete domination of Atlanta. Good job, Taysom Hill. And, like, honestly, I got to give kudos to Taysom, right? Taysom Hill had a game. Did he throw a touchdown? No. He ran for two. Did he, like, but he took risks. He was efficient, but he took risks and threw it downfield. And uh, you look at his game, and yeah, is that nothing spectacular? No. But also, wow, good job, Taysom. Like, honestly, I'm hoping that Taysom Hill continues to play like that. I want to see Taysom Hill be the future of this franchise. Um, I would love to see Taysom be the future uh, and hopefully, you know, they continue to do well. They, they get 4-0 under Taysom. That would put them at 9-0 and with backup quarterbacks over the last two years. Like, dang, Peyton! Dang, Sean Peyton! You're doing well! Um, anyway, moving on. Oh, yep, I knew there was a mess up. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm sorry, Steelers fans. <laughs> Not at one. Oh, that, I feel... So bad. Uh, ah! <laughs> Steelers fans are going to scream the fucking hell at me. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm bright red. You, I knew I messed something up earlier when I dragged it. I need to make sure I just lock all the team's positions. Uh, anyway. Uh, Chiefs are number one. And on that note, I'm going to end the episode here. I'm so fucked in Paris. Um, but anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, 
Before I end it off, though, I have to do the, the, the power moves of the week. I didn't prep that. Oofies. Uh, my power moves of the week are going to be Ravens and Steelers. Um, at the first one. 49ers and Rams for number two. And number three, I'm going to give it to Texans and Lions. Um, so I'll be interested to see kind of how that works and what happens with that. But those are the games that I think have the most impact potential on the power rankings. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Love you all. Peace out, y'all.